All right, forensic students, today we are starting with our fiber analysis lesson. Um, and a lot of times students, and I know I did too, when you think about fibers, you think, how in the world can this possibly be helpful to forensics? But if you do some research, there have been a lot of cases that have been solved through fiber analysis. And we're going to look at one of those case studies at the end of the lesson today. So let's get some definitions down to start us off. First of all, you need to know that a fiber is the smallest individual unit of a textile. Um, and excuse me, I should have said indivisible uh, unit of a textile. And then a textile is a flexible flat material that's made by interlacing yarns or threads. And you need to know that fibers often fall, up, fall off and are picked up during normal activities. Remember, low cards exchange principle, every contact leaves a trace, and that can be super helpful to investigators. So very small fibers can easily shed from most textiles, and some become what we call trace evidence. And then, of course, that trace evidence is collected from investigators and then evaluated. And that fiber evaluation can show different things it, like the type of fiber, uh, the color of the fiber, the possibility of violence associated with that fiber, the location of suspects, point of origin, and so much more. So we're going to go through some of these things and its applications to forensics. So fibers can be transferred, of course, and we can have what's called a direct transfer and we have a secondary transfer. So a direct transfer is going to be when fibers are transferred directly from victim to suspect or vice versa, suspect to victim. An example of this would be a jacket fiber from a suspect. It could be transferred to maybe the body of a victim. Now you can also have secondary transfer. So secondary transfer can be when fibers are transferred from a source and then to a suspect and then to a victim or some of those things can be switched up. It could be like from a source to a victim to a suspect. So an example would be carpet fibers from a suspect's house if they are transferred to the suspect's shoe and then the suspect goes and commits a crime and those transfers, um, those fibers are then transferred to a victim's clothing or the victim's home or the victim's car. That would be an example of a secondary transfer. Now when Forensic investigators collect fiber. They do it very uh, similarly to how they collect hairs. So they can use adhesives, forceps, plucking, scraping. Also, when lots of fibers are found, oftentimes they'll vacuum to collect multiple fibers, and then they'll put those fibers through a burn analysis, which we'll get to in a future lesson. So when we're classifying fibers, you need to know that there's two different classifications. We have natural fibers, and synthetic fibers. So natural fibers come from animals, plants, and minerals, and synthetic fibers are going to be man-made fibers. Um, if you'll remember from biology, how monomers come together to form polymers, that's uh, the way that these synthetic fibers are created. Now, when we're focusing on natural fibers, there are three different types of natural fibers. You have plant fibers, animal fibers, and mineral fibers, and you need to know some differences and some examples of each of these. So plant fibers can typically absorb water. They're insoluble in water, um, and they can be common at crime scenes because over time they become very brittle, which means they can break off easily. I think about this... Um, this burlap rug that I have. Um, my husband always complains about it because it leaves burlap everywhere. Um, and when we vacuum, we have like a vacuum cleaner full of burlap. So that would be a great example. Burlap is a plant fiber. Um, that's a great example of them being common at crime scenes because they become brittle and break off and then they're transferred. So some examples of plant fibers would be like cotton, um, Core. Core comes from like the husk of tropical plants like a coconut, um, hemp. You can have animal fibers. So just make sure you know some examples. Wool, of course, is derived from sheep. Um, you can have cashmere, which is always funny to me because cashmere is a really expensive fiber, um, but it comes from goats. <laughs> so that's always um, something that just kind of baffles me. Angora comes from rabbits. You can have silk. Real silk comes from caterpillar, caterpillar cocoons. Of course, we can have um, man-made silk as well. 
And then minerals are another type of natural fiber. So some examples of mineral fibers would be like fiberglass. Um, and if you've ever had any dealings with fiberglass, you remember it, you know it, because it itches so bad if it touches your skin. Um, asbestos is another example of a mineral fiber. Um, asbestos was used a lot in homes and building projects at the end of the 19th century, but then they realized that it was not great for health. Um, and so they've sort of switched from using asbestos. Now, synthetic fibers or man-made fibers, there are lots of examples of those. So just make sure that you know a few of those examples. Um, you can have polyester, nylon, acrylic, acetate, rayon. You can see there's some pictures of all of these. Um, I would recommend just kind of looking at the tag of your clothing um, just to see sort of what your, your clothing is made of. Is it made of one of these synthetic fibers or is it made of a natural fiber? All right, so what we're going to do to end the lesson is I want you to do some research over the Atlanta child murders. So this is a case um, that centered around Atlanta, Georgia in the 80s. There is a lot of good information on this case on Wikipedia. Wikipedia has sort of a timeline. Um, if you want to specifically research the man that is in prison for um, the murder of all of, for a lot of these children in the Atlanta area that went missing in the 80s, um, you can look up Wayne Williams. Um, but definitely take the time to research this case. It is really interesting. And this case, fibers, was an important part of this case. You can also go to YouTube and type in Atlanta Child Murders, and there's some documentaries that you might want to watch. Um, but definitely check that out because it does tie into fibers really well, um, and it's a very interesting case. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson where we will continue talking about fibers.